The earliest roots of what in time would become western science are found in the ancient river valley civilizations. In accordance with the reference literature and to avoid confusion, we will restrict ourselves to the contributions done by ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Both these civilizations made important contributions in several areas that in time would become part of the scientific traditions of the later Greco-Roman world. These areas that we will look at are writing, mathematics, medicine and astronomy. Okay, so while it's technically not a scientific contribution, the invention of writing's importance to the ancient world's scientific achievements cannot be understated. You know all that from staring at marks on paper? Yes. You're like a wizard. The first written language in the ancient world were pictographs, in which the written sign stood for the object itself. In around 3000 BC, a system of logograms was developed, in which signs were created for important words. The most popular example being Egyptian hieroglyphs. A fully syllabic language, in which signs were used solely for their phonetic value, was fully developed in around 1500 BC, and this made it possible for people to write down everything they could say. It should be mentioned that a fully alphabetic language, like the one we have today, was first developed in Greece in around 800 BC. The invention of written language meant that earlier oral traditions could be recorded, and thereby making it possible for the creation and storage of large amounts of information that earlier had relied solely on memory. It had a revolutionary effect since it opened knowledge claim to the possibility of inspection, comparison and criticism, impossible in oral cultures. Presented with a written account of an event, we can compare it to other accounts of the same or older events, and this made it possible for the ancient Greeks to later formulate a criteria for truth, and thereby creating a distinction between truth and legend. The heavens have been the object of observation and speculations since the dawn of human existence, but the earliest evidence of systematic observations, measurements and cataloging of the stars and planets is found in ancient Babylonia during the second millennia BC. The motivation for the Babylonian astronomical research had its origin in Babylonian astrology. In ancient Near Eastern cultures, it was universally believed that a wider range of natural phenomena contained concealed messages from the gods that might be deciphered by an adept astrologer. One phenomena that the gods were thought to speak through were celestial phenomena, which probably drew attention because of their apparent regularity, their celestial motion, and the Babylonians' identification of the planets with the gods. In the first millennium BC, the Babylonians had created non-mathematical diaries, almanacs and numerical planetary tables which provided resources for calculating the time and place for a variety of planetary and lunar phenomena, including eclipses, conjunction of planets and the first and last visibilities of the planets in the night sky. These achievements was the birth of ancient astronomy, and they would lay the groundwork for the later Hellenistic astronomy, which in turn would culminate in the achievements of Copernicus and Johannes Kepler. From what we know about Egyptian and Babylonian medicine, it's clear that disease in these two civilizations was mainly thought to be an invasion of the body by evil spirits. Cure was to be gained by rituals designed to appease or frighten the spirits, as well as through incantation and exorcism, and Egyptian and Babylonian healing was therefore closely tied with ancient magic and religion. Ancient medicine was not limited to prayer and ritual though. The use of pharmacological remedies, which basically is another word for drugs, were widespread in ancient Egypt and Babylonia though their effectiveness was believed to be dependent upon ritual conditions. I know it might seem strange to include these practices in a history of science series, but don't think that this is all there is to ancient Egyptian and Babylonian medicine. 
there are two ancient documents of interest here. These documents are the Ebers Papyrus and the Edwin Smith Papyrus, both written in around 1600 BC. The Ebers Papyrus is a medical document containing suggested remedies for several diseases and wounds, ranging from tumors, headaches, burns, abscess and bad breath. The Edwin Smith Papyrus is similar to the Ebers Papyrus, but mainly focuses on surgery and systematically describes the treatment of wounds, fractures and dislocations. The most notable feature of the Edwin Smith Papyrus is that it contains a careful arrangement of case studies, beginning with the description of the problem, proceeding to diagnosis, then to a verdict whether or not the ailment is treatable, and then proceeds to possible treatments. Ancient and Babylonian medicine is obviously pretty dismal compared to modern medicine, but the Ebers and Edwin Smith papyruses shows that there was attempts in these civilizations to systematically analyze and categorize different injuries and diseases, which is an important part of medical science. In the ancient world, the Egyptians and Babylonians were famous for their mathematical knowledge. In fact, the 5th century Greek chronicler Herodotus reported that Pythagoras had traveled to Egypt where he was introduced to the wonders of Egyptian mathematics by a priest, and that he later traveled to Babylonia, where he came in contact with Babylonian mathematics and eventually traveled back to his home at the island of Samos, bearing the treasures of Egyptian and Babylonian mathematics with him. Now, whether this story is accurate or just a legend, it conveys a larger truth. Namely, that the Greeks were, and know they were, the beneficiaries of Egyptian and Babylonian mathematical knowledge. So, what did they achieve exactly? Let's start with Egypt. By around 3000 BC, the Egyptians had developed a number system that was decimal in character employing different symbols for each power of 10, which in simple language means that there is one sign for the number 1, one sign for number 10, one sign for 100, and so on. Thus, if this sign represents 1, and this sign represents 10, the number 34 would have been expressed like this. By around 1800 BC, additional symbols had been introduced for the other numbers. The Egyptians also made achievements in geometry. Their geometrical knowledge was mainly focused towards solving practical problems, including those by surveyors and builders. They were able to calculate areas of simple plane figures such as circles, rectangles and triangles, and the volume of simple solids like the pyramid. For example, to find the area of a triangle, they took one half of the length of the base of the triangle times the triangle's altitude. To find the area of a pyramid, they instead took one third of the base of the pyramid times the pyramid's altitude. The Babylonians similar to the Egyptians had also developed a numerical system that was decimal in character. The system was based on the number 10, but it was simultaneously sexagesimal, in that it was based on the number 60. In practice, this meant that if the number 1 was symbolized by this triangle, and the number 10 by this triangle, the number 34 would have been symbolized like this. However, beyond the number 59, an important difference appears. Instead of forming the number 60 by linking 6 symbols of 10, the Babylonians used a play system similar to our own, with the exception that successive columns represented the power of 60 rather than the power of 10. To exemplify this, we will look at the numbers 136 and 4343. The number 136 is written like this, and the number 4343 like this. The two units in the symbol of 60 do not symbolize the number 2, but rather the number 60 times 2, which is 120. The units in the symbol 60 raised by 2 do not represent the number 1, but rather the number 60 raised by 1, which is 3600. Now you probably have an idea about how the Babylonian numerical system worked, and if you don't, feel free to leave a comment. Babylonian mathematics was superior to Egyptian mathematics, which becomes evident when we turn to problems that we would today solve with algebra. 
Algebra is a part of mathematics in which letters and other general symbols are used to represent numbers and quantities in formulae and equations. Now the Babylonians did not study genuine algebra, since they had no understanding of algebraic rules. But we can safely say that the Babylonians instead used arithmetical operations, such as addition, subtraction and equation, to solve problems for which we today would solve using quadratic equations. For example, we have Babylonian tablets that demonstrates how to solve problems such as the following. Given that the product of the numbers x and y is 36, and the sum of x and y is 11, what numbers are x and y? One final achievement worth mentioning in applied mathematics by the ancient Egyptian and Babylonian civilization are the invention of official calendars consisting of 12 months of 30 days plus an additional 5 days at the end of the year. That will be all for this video. I hope you liked it and that you learned something new about the scientific achievements of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. In the next video we will travel to the cities surrounding the Aegean Sea and cover the philosophers who would break with the whole worldview of the ancient world and spark a discussion that still continues to this day about the fundamental questions regarding humanity and their place in the universe. Don't forget that if you like this video and are looking forward to learn more about the scientific achievements of the ancient world, hit the like, share and subscribe buttons.